Welcome to Inspiratech's lesson on parametric solid modeling with SolidWorks. Now I don't really want to be trivial about this, but before we begin, you should have a basic understanding of your Windows operating system. Now I say your Windows operating system because these training videos have been produced using Windows Vista, and you may be using Windows XP or Windows 7. Although this has no real impact on SolidWorks, some functions like opening and browsing for files will differ if you're using a different operating system. So what should you be comfortable doing? Well, you should understand what a window in Microsoft Windows is, and when you're asked to select a menu, you should know what I'm referring to. In the same way, we should already understand what an icon is. If you're told to click something, what I'm asking you to do is click the left mouse button. Similarly, if you're asked to right click, I mean click the right mouse button. When asked to scroll, we want to use the scroll wheel between the left and right mouse buttons. And you should also know how to use Windows Explorer to find files on your computer. And this is something that's going to differ based on your operating system. Lastly, a concept that you may not be aware of is screen resolution. By screen resolution, I'm referring to the number of pixels wide by the number of pixels tall. All of these videos have been shot using a 1024 by 768 screen resolution. And I would suggest you use a screen resolution of 1024 by 768 as a minimum. So, with a basic understanding of your Windows operating system, we're ready to start. In this lesson, we're going to begin by opening a Stirling engine designed by Jan Ritters. Next, we'll explore the SolidWorks workspace and look at SolidWorks assemblies, SolidWorks parts, and SolidWorks drawings. While looking at SolidWorks assemblies, parts, and drawings, we're also going to look at custom properties. Custom properties are used to capture text based information about your solid file. Now because the thing that makes SolidWorks so powerful is its parametric abilities, we're going to spend some time in this first lesson describing what parametrics are all about and showing how that's going to influence your design process. And finally, in this lesson and every lesson to follow, we've created a review exercise to encourage you to put what you've learned to the test. Challenging yourself in a controlled situation is a very effective learning tool. So please, don't look at the review simply as a test. Think of it as an opportunity to solidify what you've been taught. Before we get too far into using SolidWorks, I think a little bit of background information might be helpful. SolidWorks is used to design everything from aircraft to automobiles as well as the production tooling to make these products. Typically, SolidWorks is not used for architectural or civil engineering projects. But that being said, I have seen it used to design office interiors and create architectural models. For job seekers, you would be interested to know that SolidWorks has over 1 million users globally, and searches on top job boards indicate that designers and engineers with solid work skills are 10 times more in demand than candidates with experience in any other CAD software package. Students should be aware that SolidWorks is used by many of the most prestigious engineering schools in the world, including, but not limited to, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, University of California, Berkeley, Stanford University, the California Institute of Technology, University of Toronto, Princeton University, University of Cambridge, England, McGill, and even the U.S. Air Force Academy. So even though SolidWorks feels like playing a video game, it's far from a toy. SolidWorks is the industry standard for 3D parametric solid modeling.
Now I just said that SolidWorks is a 3D parametric solid modeling CAD software package. And that's a pretty long description. So let's break it down into something that makes a little bit more sense. The acronym CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. Computer Aided Design software can either be two dimensional or three dimensional. SolidWorks is a three dimensional CAD package. There is also the acronym CAM for Computer Aided Manufacturing and a CAE for Computer Aided Engineering. A CAM software package is used to program computer controlled machines. Incidentally, SolidWorks does have add ins for performing both computer aided manufacturing and computer aided engineering functions. When we refer to a CAD software package as being parametric, we're referring to a package where models are related to each other and capture design intent. So when a change is made, it can affect other parts of that model and other models and or files. And finally, when I say SolidWorks is a solid modeling software package, I'm saying that the geometry we create in SolidWorks is a virtual solid. And as such, it's really defined by its volume and not its surfaces or outside edges. Now that being said, through the process of generating a solid model, wireframes and surfaces may be used. But the ultimate goal is to generate a solid. Once we have solid geometry, we can leverage the true power of SolidWorks and its add-ins. I want to cover one last aspect of SolidWorks before we jump into using the software. The most fundamental aspect of SolidWorks is a sketch. Sketches are generally two-dimensional profiles. Sketches are then used to form features that take this two-dimensional geometry and give it a third dimension. Finally, parts are made up of a grouping of sketches and features. We can then take these parts and build assemblies. It's important to remember that an assembly file is simply a file that records how a series of parts are related to each other. You can think of an assembly as an instruction manual or a set of plans. If you have a set of plans for a bike, you would know how to build it, but you could not build it until you had all of the parts. So if you delete a part file, then any assembly that's using it no longer has access to it. Also, if you want to send an assembly to a friend, you will need to send the parts as well as the assembly. Is just recording how those parts relate to each other. Once you have parts and assemblies, you can then generate working drawings. Drawings are similar to assemblies in the sense that they don't contain the geometry, but are rather just views of parts or assemblies. Let's say I was on a webcam in front of you. You'd be able to see me on your computer screen, but if I moved away from the webcam, you would no longer be able to see me. In the same way, a drawing is dynamic in the sense that it's constantly looking at a part or assembly, so changes to that part or assembly are reflected on the drawing. Again, a drawing file is useless without the corresponding parts and or assemblies. So with a bit of an abstract overview of SolidWorks, I think it's time to jump in and start using it.